Hey everyone, welcome to another of my quick ev tutorials on a single topic. And apologize for some of the background noise. It's like 110 degrees here, so our air conditioner is just running nonstop. The topic for today is a couple of features that just are helpful if you're trying to sync up multiple cameras together. I have another tutorial that gets more into multicam and grouping and stuff, but uh, this is one for the scenario I ran into on a documentary that thought might be useful to other people where you might have had multiple cameras running and they're kind of stopping and starting throughout the day and you don't necessarily have a clear sync point on all of them but you had a uh, real-time time code running what we would call free run time code instead of record run meaning the time codes running even when the camera's not recording so you can kind of use that to figure out when relative to each other various clips from the same camera were shot and this is a way to kind of quickly sync up a bunch of stuff so what I have here is an interview that was shot from three cameras and I just want to show you kind of how you could use some of these tools in Avid to quickly get that all synced up and ready to go as a multi-cam group. So you can see I have these three shots, a profile shot, a wide front shot, and a MCU front shot that each has two different parts. And then I also have an audio track that went through the whole thing. And I've already gone through and marked in points on the part one of all these where there is a sync point. You can see somebody clapped in front of the camera. So what I can do uh, to start with is just I'm going to take all of these first parts and I'm going to right click on them and say group clips and use endpoints. And now I have this group where they're all synced up. And if I go into edit group, you can see it synced up. There's those three clips with the audio track, which you can see ran much longer than that first bit of video. Okay, so that's all standard stuff for multicam syncing. Now, here's the trick I wanted to show you is using a function called auto sequence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two clips. What you can see here is there was some time from when this first clip ended at time code 15, 39, 10. 0 frames to when the second one started 15 43 28 17 so it was about 4 minutes and 18 seconds and this is telling me this was on free run so the camera the time code was running the whole time even when we weren't recording so i could kind of do the math and figure that all out and kind of lay them out and know where they were in relation to each other but avid actually has a feature built in to just do this for me so i'm going to click on those two and i'm going to say auto sequence and what that's going to do is create a sequence with those two clips and it's put them in sort of real time so you can see here's this gap and like I said from the time code it should be about four minutes yes and here it is four minutes 18 seconds and actually 17 frames that was off one on my out point there and so now I have these clips lined up in the order they were now in this case since the audio was continuous they should just lay right in with it very neatly I can do the same thing with these other two so I'll take these shots and say auto sequence that and it's telling me it's going to clear those endpoints. that's fine and the same thing with these two and I'm going to auto sequence those and clear the endpoint, and that's fine okay so now I have three separate sequences up here and you can see by default it just gives the sequence the name of the first clip in it which in this case isn't very descriptive and it's not the name of what I've renamed the clip it kind of actually went back to the original media but that's fine we can work with this and now what I want to do is I want to take this group that I already made and I'm going to put these sequences into it keeping this sort of gap between these first two so everything should line up correctly so first I'm going to open up this multi-group again and just hit edit group so I can see it again here's my first clips and uh, something I'm going to do and you'll see why in a second is I'm going to grab all of this stuff and I'm just going to scoot it over here a little bit to give myself a little room on the front end okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these sequences and I'm going to drop them in here to my timeline but my timeline here, remember, is this grouped clip. So I'm actually seeing what's inside that group and how all the tracks are synced up. So I'm going to take one of these, drag it. So I'm not going to double click on it because if I double click, it'll load in the record monitor. And I want to load in the source monitor in this case. I'm going to look what this is. Okay, this is the profile shot. So what I want to do is replace the profile shot, which is the one on this track. And it's going to start at the same point, right? Because if I go here, look, you can see this point starts at the beginning of this clip as you would expect and starts at the beginning of this clip so I'm just going to take this down and I'm going to line it right up with that and you can see this clip lined up exactly it doesn't look like anything changed except now when we look here I've got that latter part of the interview the second shot or second part of this synced in here correctly and it should line up with the audio now we can take a look here and try to see what's going on It was funny because one at one time we were... You can see the audio there synced up. 
And so now I'm just going to do the same thing with these other two. So let's load this one into the source monitor. Okay, you can see this is my wide shot. So let's go back here, find the wide. And I want to drop that in right where that one started. And then I'll grab close up and get this one right where this one started. And now I should have all my shots synced up. But now they're going to go all the way through to the end here. So I can clear monitor and it's going to ask me if I want to update this group, which I do. I want to update the changes I made to it. And now let's just see how this worked. Just throw up a temporary sequence here. I'll load this group clip into it. And now you can see hard. I've got all three of those clips playing in sync even though there were cuts in here. Now in this case, I only had two takes from each camera, so this wasn't super difficult, but if you had something where you were starting and stopping a whole bunch of times throughout the day, you're shooting a live event or something, and you know, you're know you not running your camera for several hours straight, but you might have a whole bunch of shots, this is a quick way to sync up all of those shots from multiple cameras and get them into one long sequence or group that has everything synced up from the beginning to the end. One quick caveat I'll give you is this isn't quite the same as if we really had something locking timecode and feeding timecode to all the cameras at the same time. That would obviously be an ideal situation because then we just know the timecodes all match. It is possible if your camera isn't running perfect sync and perfect timecode that over the course of several clips or a long thing, again, if you're shooting all day, starting and stopping, that real-time time code might not end up exactly frame accurate the whole day. I've had things where, you know, you look at the end of the sequence and you might need to adjust some of the clips a couple of frames to get them to exactly line up. So I'm not saying this is perfectly foolproof. I would still go through and check and make sure everything looks like it's correctly synced, but it's a much quicker way to get there than taking this bit of footage you have where you didn't do another slate, didn't resync it, and you're trying to figure out exactly where this lines up with a whole bunch of other shots that also might not have had a clear slate on all of them. So hope that's helpful to you. I'll actually have another short tutorial coming up soon on working with these group clips and particularly with the audio clips and making sure you're getting the audio clips you want out of it. But that's it for now. Hope that was helpful to you and see you next time.